Hey everyone, in this video, we are gonna talk about how to use Derive in Fusion. Now, Derive is a topic that likely doesn't get enough screen time, but there are a couple of very good use cases for Derive. So in this video, we're gonna talk about how to use it. We're gonna talk about the flow of data, some things to avoid, and why you may want to use Derive. So first things first, how do we use it? Well, inside of our design on the Create menu, we have Derive. Now, Derive lets us bring a bunch of different things into their own designs. Things like sketches, bodies, components, and even entire sub-assemblies. So when we select Derive, the first thing that we wanna do is decide whether or not this goes to a new design or into an existing design that's either open or in our data panel. Then we need to determine what we wanna bring. For example, we can bring components, which will be entire sub-assemblies or individual components, or we can decide to bring objects. In this case, if I bring just a single body, we can place that at the origin if needed, and we can also decide to bring parameters from our favorites or from components. In this case, we're gonna select okay to bring the single body into its own derive. Now, once we have a derive, this is an untitled document until we save it. Derives have a singular flow direction of data. And what this means is that changes made at the top level of our design, for example, if we make changes to recesses for overmolding or if we add additional vent holes, that information will be carried down into our derive. However, anything that we change, update, or modify in the derive itself stays with the derive and does not go back to the top level assembly. It only goes in a single direction. Because of this, Derive has some unique and interesting use cases that we want to discuss. But let's also talk about the fact that once we have a Derive, we can't simply reinsert this back into the top level assembly. So because of that, there are some interesting restrictions on those workflows that we need to consider. The second thing that we do want to talk about is what information comes with the Derive. For example, we have this carrier lock plate, which is a sheet metal component. When we select Create, Derive, and we expand the objects, we see that there are some sketches, some construction geometry, and additional bodies that do come with it. When we say OK, the new design contains that sheet metal component and sub bodies and components inside of there. You'll note that because it's a sheet metal component, we do have a sheet metal rule, but there's not currently any flat patterns. Flat patterns can be regenerated inside of our derive and can be used downstream for manufacturing or detail drawing creation. But once again, any changes made to our design here do not go back to that top level assembly. So it's a good use case for exporting designs for manufacture that maybe need additional changes that don't affect the original assembly. Let's go back to our industrial framing nailer and let's take a look at one more example. We're gonna take a look at creating a derive. We're gonna select this component here and we're gonna say, okay. In some cases, we might have components or designs that are as cast or things that are molded. Now, when we have molded designs or cast designs that need additional operations, putting them into their own derive can be a great way to simplify that operation without affecting the original assembly. So now let's talk about those use cases. When we're talking about a design, oftentimes when we're exploring our original designs, we may wanna create variations. And while Fusion does have configurations, creating configurations of complex shapes is not something that is used for. So if we're trying to explore different shapes of a housing, for example, we may wanna build our complete assembly where all the components go, and we may wanna to start to explore those shapes or variations of them. Things like different vent locations, grip handle shapes, and locations of specific features. That is a great use case for Derive by pulling out those base shapes and working on them more in their own designs. A second variation of the use of Derive would be for manufacturing. If we need to create work holding or fixturing as well as tool pass to cut a design, oftentimes doing that in a Derive is a much cleaner approach rather than trying to insert vices and work holdings into a top level assembly. That can simply complicate the top level assembly, especially detailed drawings and bill of materials. So pulling out individual components for manufacture into their own derives can be a great way to make that happen. And probably the next use case and most common use case would be to generate molds and tooling. 
While on the surface, it may seem very similar to creating CNC machining toolpaths, creating a mold cavity can be a very complex process. Adding a bunch of sketches and features to the original assembly for the purposes of creating a mold can simply complicate the design and once again have downstream effects on things like detailed drawings. So using a derive to create things like parting surfaces and mold cores and cavities is a great use case for the derive tool. There are many other use cases for derive, but those are a couple of the most common ones. So next time you're working on a complex assembly and you need to generate some tooling, create a variation of a design, or even explore mold concepts, consider using the derive tool.